Hello everyone, welcome back to another Friday and another casual champion review. It's horse time. Taking a look at the the big horse, the big hecking guy, Hecka Rim. I hope uh hope I don't get demonetized in the first few seconds of the video for just saying heck. I don't know, YouTube's been kind of weird with the whole swearing policy lately. I don't really know what's going on. So yeah, we're playing the horseman today. I have never noticed how scrunkly his tail looks. Is that because the visual effects update? I don't remember it looking that spindly and pathetic. You know what isn't spindly and pathetic though? Fan art section. I don't know how any of you fellas even came up with ideas for fan art section for Hecarim. Uh, it's kind of a weird character to make one a centaur at that, which we'll get into this whole centaurness in the video, but thank you fellas for the people doing the fan art section. It's wonderful. Christmas coming up soon. I don't think there will be a casual champion review before Christmas, so for the people who are watching, uh, a Merry Christmas. Thank you fellas. You're awesome. So I'm playing Hecarim in the jungle. I was considering playing him in the mid lane or the top lane, kind of an off meta build, but I have tried that a few times before and it does not go well and I'd rather, you know, focus on talking about the champion rather than focus on not dying to my lane opponent because they don't care that I'm playing something funny and off meta. So Hecarim's kind of weird where he didn't have a lot of lore initially, but post Ruination he's actually a pretty central character to Viego's conflict, to Kalista, to Isolde. Like, as far as Shadow Isles characters go, certainly above where Yorick or Karthus stand nowadays, he's very important. So back before the Ruination, Hecarim was a lieutenant in the Iron Order of Camivore. It was a big military branch of Camivore that rode on horseback. And the commander saw in him a bright and fierce warrior, a potential successor to become commander one day. But over time, he kind of learned that Hecarim, while very good in battle, also kind of had a bloodlust for violence. And the commander deemed him too dangerous to become the commander one day and told them straight to Hecarim's face and Hecarim was not too happy about that. So during the next battle they went out to they were surrounded by enemies all over the place and the commander is there about to die and Hecarim's there. He could have saved him but instead of doing so leaves the commander alone to die on the battlefield and none of the other Iron Order uh, soldiers know that Hecarim did this. They just assume that the commander died in battle and they pledge their allegiance to him. I skip forward a little bit when he sold is poisoned. Viego lashes out, wishing to end all would-be uh, people that are suspicious of killing the queen or attempting to kill the queen. So he orders Hecarim to go out and find these people and kill them viciously. But Hecarim, oh, Hecarim does not really care. He kind of kills indiscriminately because he hungers for war and to kill whoever he can. Whenever he can. See, I know this isn't too good right now for you, Cassante, but trust me. Oh, you're gonna get one item and you're gonna kill everybody. Not only did Hecarim kill indiscriminately, but he stoked Viego's fear and paranoia even after the queen had actually perished. He turned Viego's grief and sadness into rage and uh, proposing the idea to lash out not just the people of Camivore, but the people of distant lands. Mostly just for Hecarim's own desires to kill people. He really likes killing people. But Kalista, on her quest to search for a cure for the queen, came back with knowledge of the Blessed Isles, but was too late, and Viego considered her a prisoner. But Hecarim visits Kalista's cell and tries to persuade her to give him the directions to the Blessed Isles, and she only knows the way to get there because he wants all the valuable loot there and to kill everybody there because, again, he really likes killing people. She's a Eventually convinced, then Hecarim, Kalista, and uh, Viego all go to the Blessed Isles together. But upon their shores, the masters of the Blessed Isles are greeted and they say, No, we're not helping you bring your dead wife back to life. And Viego lashes out at H and says, Kill them all! Kill them all right now! And Kalista says, No, I don't want to. I I'm a good guy now. And then Hecarim, with a big ass smile on his face, gladly stabs her in the back. Literally. Not just figuratively. And then Hecarim goes on a rampage throughout the rest of the city, killing anyone and anyone he can. And all the while, Viego is taking his soul down to the Blessed Isles, holy waters or, or magic, whatever, the special waters to try and bring her back to life. And the ruination happens, but he's so distracted with killing all the people. Again, he really, really likes killing people. He's so distracted that he doesn't even notice the ruination until it's too late. And upon trying to escape, he is enveloped along with the rest of his Iron Order. And he is fused to the body of his horse this horrible amalgamation of the two, this twisted abomination of, of, you know, thing of what he used to be. He now has the power of a horse because he's fused to his horse. I don't know what happened to the consciousness of his horse. 
I assume it died. But now he's bound to the Shadow Isles, unable to kill people, which is his favorite thing. And he's only able to get out and escape into the wider world of Runeterra during moments like the Harrowing, so he can ride into Bilgewater and kill people there, or during moments like the Ruination, where he went to Demacia. In fact, I'm pretty sure after the Ruination, Hecarim is still stranded in Demacia, I don't think he ever managed to come back to the Shadow Wild, so there's just a whole barrage of ghost horses out there somewhere, along with the dragons and demons and mages and mage seekers. Demacia has a lot of problems right now. And that's where his lore kind of ends, though he was in the Ruination novel, you know, it was supposed to explore the origins of these characters, and it posed Hecram not as much as the psycho murder man that he's kind of been one note, uh, degraded to over the past little while, but they made him a bit more of a tactical strategist that he wanted to usurp the throne himself. I guess that makes sense, but I don't know. I, his current motivation does really match the kind of character he is because as a character, he's just a goofy villain. I don't know how else to describe him really, other than he, he likes to kill things. Like that's his primary motivation. Does that make for a good character? In the right context, it can. I think for a character like Viego, just being this goofy character would not make any sense, or, or Renata's kind of lighthearted. That's her personality. Hecarim just likes to kill things. I would never really see Hecarim as an antagonist, like a main antagonist. He would be some kind of sub boss or obstacle you encounter along the way in a game or a TV show, primarily because he just looks like a He Man villain. You know? It's just. He's so extra, like the insane amount of skulls and mouths all over him. Like I get it, he's supposed to look scary, but with these giant pauldrons and all the extra skulls and face, he just looks goofy. He looks like a 90s action figure. I don't know if that was the direction they were going with, but if it was, they succeeded in strides. But as a scary rampaging half horse, half man going through the Shadow Isles, no, it doesn't really work, especially considering his whole gameplay is about being fast, you know, like horses are supposed to be fast, but he's so bulky, he just he doesn't look like he could even run very fast. I think a good way I could describe Hecarim's model is that he looks old, even though he's not as old as some of the other champions who really need an update, you know, like Nidalee or Zillion and stuff. But just looking at his character model, you think, yeah, this character looks a bit outdated and that's probably also why they gave him that bit of a particle effects update why his tail looks so stubby now i think it used to be a solid mesh before but now it's a little bit translucent and they say that way wanted to fight the horse i've been putting it off for a while now but that's where we get into the wild rift update they did for hacker and i've talked a bit about the legend of runeterra up champion updates they've done in the past but never wild rift and that's because mostly on the whole the wild rift upgrades have been Hecarim and Kassadin, Sivir, Zyra, Sindra is coming up next, and Hecarim. I think that's all of them. But they're more of minor tweaks as opposed to the massive reinventions that champions like Nidalee or Jax have been for Legends of Runeterra. So for the Wild Rift update, what did they do to Hecarim? Well, just like Kassadin, the splash art was actually revealed for League of Legends first and then released on Wild Rift later, which I really hope... They'd stop doing that, by the way, because it's just false advertising. I was kind of excited to see the new Hecarim splash art. Imagine a new player comes in and sees that you get in game and it's completely different. Th that's not fair. But anyways, what did they do to him? Well, first off, they finally committed to him being green. Hecarim's been stuck in this weird limbo where he was especially very blue before the particle effects of it. Now he's more of a bluish green, but the Wild Rift design really goes crazy in that green direction, probably because that is the actual color of the Black Mist and Shadow Isles. They're trying to move now with Legends of Runeterra, Mordekaiser especially, and Kindred, that blue is the color of death, green's the color of undeath. But they did remedy a lot of the problems that I have with Hecarim. They made him a lot sleeker. He looks a lot more streamlined, like he could actually run really fast. All of the crazy extra skulls on his thighs and his stomach, like, those weren't necessary. They just made him look goofy. He looks like... Oh, God. Okay, I know many of my viewers are not Canadian. The Adventure of... Or the Adventures of Quest, I think it was called? It was some Canadian TV show, and there was one bad guy who has this giant skull in his stomach. Like... 
That's what Hack Room reminds me of. But they got rid of all that to replace it with more bony looking features like a rib cage, especially on the underneath part of the horse looks like the rib cage. Also the segmented hoofs, the glaive looks a lot more spectral like. He still has kind of that goofy grin that base Hecarim has, but it doesn't look so dopey. The new one looks goopy, but it looks like a smile, like he's cackling, like he's reveling in being able to kill all these people because he really likes killing people. In my opinion, compared to a lot of the other Wild Rift designs, like I don't think Kassin is that much of an improvement. Zyra is not much of an improvement. Sivir is barely noticeable. Hecarim feels very noticeable and like a pretty substantial improvement, though I don't think it makes Hecarim a truly great character. I think ideally for Hecarim, you would want him to be an actual twisted abomination between human and man. Because getting from his design, you don't really get that. There's a lot of the Shadow Isles creatures just look like slightly more exaggerated versions of normal fantasy things, like the Crocolith is just a big crocodile or the living parchments. A lot of the Iron Order and Hecarim just look like ghostly centaurs. You don't really get that idea that they're supposed to be a horrible fusion of man and beast. Ideally, I think it would have been awesome if the horse skull is still a part of him. Like, he already has this giant, stupid skull face in the middle of his chest. How creepy would it have been if it was an actual horse skull that moved on its own? Like, there were two minds conflicting with each other. He's trying to hold back his bloodless with a horse in tandem is also bloodthirsty. I don't know the motivation of the horse. I just think Hecarim out of probably any champion league has this really cool potential to be this insane body horror champion. And obviously Riot is never going to do that because they did a little redesign for him already. But also because Riot has definitely moved away from champions intentionally designed to be unappealing you know old Urgot, old swain old scion they were all intentionally ugly with every rework that comes out and every new champion no characters designed to look ugly or creepy on purpose so it would never happen for hackram even though i think it would be really cool it does end you're correct Casanto. as for gameplay i don't know how to feel about hackram because he feels like out of any other champion in the game he fluctuates in power level constantly like for one patch suddenly he's the best jungler in the entire game and the very next nobody plays him not to mention for some reason every time he does come back into favor his build oops his build is completely different like right now i'm maxing q for a while there it was maxing w before that it was maxing e and then it was maxing q and then maxing e and then maxing q like he cycles back and forth so constantly like if you take a what the hell if you take a break from playing hecarim Oh, you probably won't know what to do the next time you play him. That isn't to say he doesn't have a really funny gimmick. I wish I could have gone at this game, but fortunately there's like three tanks on this team, so I can't really. But Lethality Hacker is definitely the funniest way for me that I've seen him be played. Like the E-Max speed charging, because he does have a very cool mechanic that I wish they would incorporate onto more characters, which is the increasing your AD or your damage based on how fast you're going and Warwick does that kind of where his ult range increases depending on how fast he's going but look at that from home guards I gain like a hundred AD that's so funny it encourages you to do full movement speed builds just to see how high of an AD you can get for building a stat that normally doesn't really give anything other than map traversal so I'm always sad when that version of Hecarim falls out of favor because assassin Hecarim is definitely it's cheesy and stupid and he dies in one hit but it is very fun they definitely tried to orient him more towards the bruiser playstyle, which thematically I guess makes more sense for like a rampaging horse but he's supposed to be fast I like fast hacker of okay activating ghost activating speed move see like normally that would do a ton of damage but now I'm just relegated to just spamming this Q button over and over. No hard feelings, Thresh. I know, you know, we didn't even really meet each other during the Ruination. Or I should say when you destroyed Camivore, but... You know, you're dead now, so... There's an interesting thing. I know I've talked about Wild Rift a lot so far in this video, but... Wild Rift did introduce a pretty interesting mechanic that they do a lot of times when they introduce new champions to Wild Rift, like Karma and Kassin and stuff. Hecarim has a chargeable Q, so you can hold the button and then do a big slash that does more damage in a wider area. It seems like such a minor thing, but I think it would add a lot of skill expression and fun to Hecarim, because right now, it's like Skarner. You just mash this Q button over and over and over again as your primary damage source. It gets very repetitive very quickly. As for skins, Hecarim has 
weirdly enough, I think some of the absolute worst skins in the entire game and some of the best. Like, he's got his really old ones like Blood Knight. That one's horrible. Reaper Hecarim is just a bootleg version of Pumpkinhead, which I think Pumpkinhead is fantastic. Elderwood, very cool. Arcade Hecarim, of course, Arcade Hecarim is amazing. I have a bit of a soft spot for Lancer Zero in a weird sort of way. It's not a very good skin. I just like it aesthetically. The new Winter Bless skin's kind of cool. But with that Winter Bless skin and with a lot of his skins in general, for some reason, Riot has this obsession with turning his glaive into a scythe in almost all of his skins now. You know, like Winter Blessed or High Noon or Reaper or Pumpkinhead, they all turn his glaive into a scythe, which I guess back when we didn't have Kane, sure. It was a unique weapon that wasn't in the game, but as far as I know, we don't have another character with a weapon like Hecarim in League, so it seems weird they keep replacing it. There's also the fact that in the skins, for some reason, you know how I mentioned over and over and over again how much this guy loves to kill people? He's very clearly a bad person, yet for some reason, in more skins than not, he's a good guy. Like, Arcade Hecarim, you would think he'd be a battle boss. No, he's one of the good guys. Winter Bless, he's a good guy. Cosmic, he's a good guy. Arcana, he's a good guy. Lancer Zero, he's a good guy. He's a good guy in pretty much every new skin he's gotten. All his old skins are the one where they made him a villain. And I'm not opposed to making a, you know, a villainous character have a good guy skin or vice versa. It just seems kind of weird that for a character so deplorably evil, he is, uh, you know, a good guy in almost all his skins. I was thinking I was gonna have to record a second game for this video because it looked like the enemy was so far behind we were gonna have to, you know, they were gonna have to surrender, but it looks like they're actually picking back up. I don't know how much longer this game's gonna go on for because really I don't have a lot else to say about Hecarim. I am very happy at least he's expanded tremendously beyond what he used to be. He still is, motivation-wise, just a guy who murders because he likes to murder. Ruination Novel helped flesh that out a little bit more so that he's trying to take over the throne, or did want to at one point at least. But other than that, as far as the hack room we got now, he is just a big, goofy-looking horseman, he-man villain running around the rift at supersonic speeds, killing people because he likes killing people. It's not offensively bad, I don't think. It just feels kind of undercooked. Again, I think the Wild Rift version helped improve that a pretty good amount. I think the Wild Rift version is actually a significant upgrade. Just not what I think the direction you could take for Hecarim to make him truly amazing. I really want that kind of body horror, a disastrous, abomination-looking Hecarim. But yeah, I think that about closes out my thoughts on the champion. Um, I don't know how much longer this game's gonna go on for, but I guess we'll see. Holy f I was not expecting it to go on for that long. I am so done with this character. I played him too much. This has not been fun. Hecarim to so many tanks is misery. At least we can be free, although next week is not going to be much more fun because I have to play the Dongus. And that is, by definition, not fun. So thank you for watching this week's Casual Champion Review, fellas. Have yourselves a Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Holidays, and I'll see you next time, alright? <laughs>